about is inverse propensity weighing or sometimes called IPW. So IPW or inverse propensity weighing is a technique that is used to combat sampling bias. So how do we get sampling bias? Sometimes we could be unable to collect data from some parts of the population or there could be missing data in our data sets but data is not missing at random but columns are missing for certain user groups or features are missing for certain user groups or you could have a situation where you're doing a b testing and the treatment is very expensive so it is administered to only a few users compared to the control right and again you know you want to get a realistic estimate uh, so suppose you are trying to compute some kind of a statistical estimate like a mean or you know whatever you're trying to compute, you want to get a realistic estimate that is representative of the whole population, even though you have some sampling bias. How do we do that? So typically, if we have data with sampling bias, one strategy is to do something like stratified sampling where we try to avoid the bias in the first place, or we take that data and try to do some kind of, you know, sampling on top of the data in order to get a more representative sample from all the different groups. Another approach is to readjust the importance given to groups that are underrepresented. And this is what is inverse propensity weighing. So let's take an example to understand this more clearly. So let's say that there is a course that was offered both online and offline. About 100 people took the course and 50 of these people took the course online and 50 took the course offline. Now it's nice that we have all these numbers here and but let's see what how we can now come up with a rating for the course so suppose we actually have an online survey to rate the course and we got 40 responses the first thing you'll think of here is there's something called self-selection bias so if you sent an online survey people who took the course online are probably more accustomed to receiving emails from this company about you know course content and feedback and so on and they are more likely to take the survey so you might get more responses from the people who took the course online so let's say we got 33 online uh, responses from online students for the course and seven responses from the offline students right so this confirms the fact that there might be self-selection bias and now what can we do to get a realistic estimate of the average rating for this course we want to weigh the responses from the offline students a bit more, right? So how do we do this? So again, you know, think of your data set as a table here where the first column is whether they took the survey or not. So 40 people took the survey. So you should have like, you know, 40 ones and the remaining zeros. And then their course, whether it's offline or online, how the student has taken the course, you should have 50 zeros and 50 ones here and the rating they gave to the course. So it's possible that the offline students in general maybe gave a higher rating, right? So maybe the rating is like 4.3 when the course is offered offline, which is one here. And for the students who took the course online, the rating maybe is lower, right? So if we just take the average of all the values in this column Y, which is the rating column, we might get an average that is not representative of the offline students opinion right because very few of the offline students actually responded how do we bump up the weight given to offline students so the solution is instead of doing a simple mean we actually add a denominator which includes the probability or propensity that the person took the survey given whether they took the course online or offline so let me put it like in more words to make it clearer to you so let's say we have, uh, we said we had 100 students who took the course overall and we want to sort of take the average over these 100, but we would only have valid terms for people who actually took the survey. So this delta would be zero if they didn't take the survey and we would only end up with terms that took the survey. We take that person's rating, student I's rating, divided by the probability that student I took the survey given the student is online or offline so if it's an online student this ratio in the denominator would be 33 by 50 because 33 of the online students out of 50 
responded to the survey, right? So we divided this into two terms, the term for students who took it online and term for students who took it offline, right? 33 by 50 would be the denominator for students who took it online. So probability of the survey being taken given the student is online is 33 by 50. And similarly, it is 7 by 50 for offline students. So what we did is we divided the rating by a denominator which is, you know, smaller in the case of underrepresented group, which is offline in this case. And by dividing with a smaller denominator, we are giving it more weightage, right? So it's that's why it's inverse propensity weighing. And now if we simplify this, it just turns out to be taking the ratio of ratings for all the online students, all the 33 online ratings, plus the ratio of all the seven students who took offline rating and then taking an average of both these. So that's what the solution turns out to be in this case. So what we are saying is we avoid the offline students being underrepresented by taking these two separate averages and then averaging them. And this sort of makes sense, right, from a common sense perspective to avoid the effect of selection bias here. And this turned out to be the solution here, but overall the whole idea here is to do this ratio in such a way that we are giving more weightage to the underrepresented groups. So sometimes it's not as simple to compute this denominator which is, which is the weightage. So here it is very simple to come up with this 33 by 50, 7 by 50 and so on because we have all the numbers, how many people took the course, how many people took the survey, how many people did it online, how many people did it offline. Sometimes it's not as easy. Uh, some of there might be some other latent factors that are not observed and because of that we might not be able to uh, exactly come up with these ratios and then let's uh, we then there are some techniques to estimate these ratios and we will look at that in a separate video but what we learned today let us summarize is inverse propensity weighing it is a technique IPW as it is called is a technique to combat sampling bias when coming up with estimates and the idea is to weigh data from underrepresented groups more and it has many applications such as coming up with estimates for data collected from surveys or A-B testing or even handling missing data. Thank you.